So in this video we're going to uh, work out uh, some techniques for converting straight from spherical into cylindrical or vice versa coordinate systems. And the idea is if you wanted, if you have spherical and cylindrical coordinate systems, you can always convert between them by using the rectangular coordinate system as a go-between. We've established relationships between cylindrical and rectangular coordinate systems and between spherical and rectangular coordinate systems. So it, it would always be the case that we could convert from cylindrical to rectangular, rectangular to spherical, or vice versa. But it is possible to establish some relationships that will take us directly between spherical and cylindrical coordinate systems without, with possibly not having to step through this intermediate coordinate system. So here's the first, first set of um, relationships that we're going to establish. We're going to identify that r equals rho sine phi and we've actually seen this one in a previous video now. We have assigned this length from the origin to the point directly below the point P that we're interested in. We've assigned this length as r and we've done this now over a series of different homework assignments and we are identifying the length of the hypotenuse from the origin to the point P in three space. We're calling this length rho. And so we've already seen that we can lift this length up and create a right triangle here. And this length will still be R and R is opposite phi. So we know from right angle trigonometry that R is going to equal rho times the sine of phi. It's the hypotenuse times the sine of the angle equaling the side opposite the angle. So that's straight from <clears throat> Sorry, choking. That's straight from just using trigonometry. In the spherical and cylindrical coordinate systems, theta is actually the same angle. It's the angle that we make with the positive x-axis in the x-y plane. So theta is just going to equal theta regardless which direction you're going. And then z is just the height right here. So z is just this height. And this height is adjacent, uh, our angle phi, so rho times the cosine of phi is going to equal z from, again, right triangle trigonometry. So our other sets of relationships, we again have given this length here, length r. We've called the length of this hypotenuse rho. And we know that the height of this right triangle, the directed height is going to be z. So the Pythagorean theorem tells us that the, the sum of the squares of the legs will equal the square of the hypotenuse. So this is just an app direct application of the Pythagorean theorem to our directed distances. Again, theta is the same angle, so theta always equals theta. And here, uh, this just comes from using this right triangle and understanding that this angle is phi or this angle we could also label as phi and we've already established that the cosine of phi we've already established this is equal to z over rho by trigonometry the side adjacent the angle is z adjacent over hypotenuse is the cosine of the angle. So if we need to know what phi is, we just take the arc cosine of both sides. So we get phi is equal to the arc cosine. I don't like how I wrote that arc cosine of, it's going to be z over rho. But rho from right here, we've established that rho squared is equal to r squared plus z squared. So if we want rho, we just take the square root of both sides and we can replace the rho here with the square root of r squared plus z squared. So these are relationships on, the, on the, these two slides that can allow us to map directly between the cylindrical and spherical systems without having to pass through the rectangular coordinate system as an intermediate de uh, device. 